from Don Carter's All-Star Lanes, Dallas West in the Metroplex. ESPN's live coverage of the PBA Tour continues with the Dallas Open. Dave Ryan, Randy Peters, we have four finalists, two of whom are bidding for their first ever PBA title, and now they are ready to roll. He won the PBA Rookie of the Year Award in 2003 and was points champion in 2004. He hopes 2005 will be his first title from Lockport, New York, Brad Angelo. He's figured out how to make it to match play. He's figured out how to make it to the big show. Can he figure out a way to win a tournament today? Oh, Canada. A native of John Kier, Quebec, he bowled his way under the PBA Tour and Tour Trials last summer, and today makes his first ever TV Finals appearance, Patrick Girard. Patrick is one of the few PBA bowlers to rival Robert Smith's power. He bangs on it with a real loose swing, and when it doesn't hook back, he bangs on it harder. From Terrytown, New York, he finished second at this season's ABC Masters. Today he looks for career title number three, Patrick Allen. Out of eight lefties that made it to match play, only PA made it to TV. The free spirit with the free swing looks to capitalize on being the lone left-hander in today's field. His six career PBA titles include the 2000 U.S. Open, one of the hottest bowlers on tour. He finished second last week in El Paso from Thousand Oaks, California, Robert Smith. Maximum Bob is back and back with a vengeance. The most powerful player on the PBA tour. When he's on his game, he reduces the pins to shrapnel. These are your finalists for the PBA Dallas Open. Welcome everyone to Big D, the 12th PBA event in this great city, 103rd in the state of Texas. A huge crowd jammed in to watch four of the world's best forwards gun for the title. Randy, let's check those matchups. Thanks, Dave. Semi-final number one pits two bowlers with differing experience levels and the same goal, a first PBA title. Brad Angelo won Rookie of the Year two years ago as a 33-year-old. Patrick Girard, well, he just turned 21 in September. In semifinal number two, the top left-hander on the PBA points list, Patrick Allen, takes on Robert Smith, who looks to improve on last week's runner-up finish in El Paso. All right, Randy, for the first time, we say bienvenue. Welcome to Patrick Girard from near Quebec City, Quebec. You came in a little bit early today to get a lay for the land, your first ever show. Did that help ease your nerves a bit? Not really right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous, that's not funny, but I'm gonna enjoy it. So everybody enjoy. <laughs> Best of luck to you. Brad, you've been around. He's only 21 years old. A youngster making his first ever TV show today. Can you take advantage of his inexperience? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, he's, he's accepting the fact that he's nervous and he could come out and strike like crazy, uh, like he did all week. So I don't know. I just gotta try to keep the pressure on him. Good luck to you. Thank you. Perhaps one of these two, Randy, wins their first ever PBA title today here in Dallas. Lots of money at stake, almost a quarter of a million dollar total prize fund. $40,000 to the winner and a one-year exemption for next year's 2005-2006 season. Remember, win one match, you guarantee yourself no less than $20,000. This, this match, right off the bat, is going to come down to experience, and that will be the, to the advantage of Brad Angelo. Patrick Girard in shock that he actually started his first ever shot on television with a strike, Dave. Wow. Got a great memory for Patrick Girard. South of the border, but not much. Lockport, New York, near Buffalo. Here's Brad Angelo's first ball in Dallas today. Ten pin.
PBA Rookie of the Year, who had five shows last season, but still, as we've talked about, has not won that coveted PBA championship as yet. Will that change today? Ten pin for him, finally taking on a right-hander after rolling through some lefties. We'll talk about that. Leading us to the Babe Ruth Real Deal matchup, number one of the day, Randy. Hey, looks like a pretty tight matchup, but the big difference isn't written, I'll write it for you. This guy's 35, this guy's only 21. Again, experience, Angelo. And this is what, this is what experience does for you, Dave. Ranked number one in match play this year. It's his third TV show of the season as well. Perfect ball. Shutting the rack is Brad Angelo. He lost to Rick Lawrence in St. Louis. The BoasParadise.com opened a title match. Also to Norm Duke in the semis in Medford, Oregon. In practice, Brad started off much further to the right. Now he's right around the second arrow. Both shots that he threw, even though he left a ring in 10 in the first frame. Perfect. An incredible story. Patrick Gerard. Ten pin for him. Just 21 years old. A year ago, knew almost no English. Right, He's rookie year on tour. It's a good test. And we're a bit surprised. He's speaking English to himself because we asked him before the show today. Is going to cut in French or English, Patrick? And he'll take the 10 pin as well. A 21 year old youngster enjoying every moment of it. 221.37 average to get here. Only beat the player of the year last year, Mika Kuebunemi, in five games. Right, Longtime veteran Hugh Miller in five, the lefty, and Mike Machuga, one of the best bowlers on tour this year, in six. <laughs> well, almost to Brooklyn. He didn't like it when he released that ball, no question. And a six pin. Well, right now, Patrick Gerard's just finding it difficult to breathe. But as you can see, he didn't like that shot. As soon as it left his hand, left all the way. This week, you didn't have a lot of oil in the middle part of the lane to keep that ball online. Through the tour trials in June, Patrick Gerard finished second behind right. Mike Edwards. Here we go now. To get exempts. And you see the very unusual glasses he has there. There's a story behind the glasses frames Patrick is wearing and will break down for you as well. Those are actually sunglass frames that he got from the Circus Circus Casino in Reno <laughs> for 50 cents. You know, you put the money in, they got the little crane thing, you bring them out, prizes. Well, he did well with the tour trials. Second, wearing those glasses, those are prescription lenses inside sunglass frame for 50 cents he got them. Now there's lucky glasses. He's too young to be in a casino, isn't he? <laughs> he might have just been 21. So deliberate, perfect pacing as he comes to the foul line. Thing of beauty. Yeah, and, and early on, no hooping it up for Brad Angelo. He's just business as usual right now, and right now he's really putting it on first-timer Patrick Gerard. As you can see how Brad got here, all three left-handers he defeated en route. 4-1, 4-2, 4-3, seven-game match with Mike Scroggins to get here today. Scroggins, a Texas native. Yeah, lane level up. Really beautiful shot from our crew and a great shot from Brad Angelo as well. Shreds the rack. He said to us last night, Randy, he has got to become a shot maker this week. That has been his specialty. And this oil pattern, the scorpion pattern, will break down for you throughout our broadcast today. Really adheres to his game and that he can be a technician on this oil. In English, in French, no matter what, that's a great shot. Patrick Gerard. Get this one out to about the fourth board and all that power and revolutions. Gets that ball to bite. Makes its turn up into the 1 3. Caves a 10 in last. He needs to do a lot more of that to get back in this match. We hear him taking the deep breaths. How is he handling this pressure right now? That's light. Well, he's handling, handling it okay. He doesn't have any opens yet, but 
He's been suspect on the, the uh, left lane. With the spare here, he'll still be clean, but he'll also be trailing by 21. He is from two hours north of Quebec City, Quebec, folks, if you are familiar with that province. And the geography, we're talking northern Quebec, where almost no English is spoken. It's like going to the countryside of France up there. And our road to the PBA Danny's World Championship. Danny Wiseman, having won the ABC Masters to begin our season, is number one. But Patrick Allen, still bidding for his first title of the year, was a finalist to Wiseman in Milwaukee. Makes his second show today, and he takes on Maximum Bob. Robert Smith, finalist last week in El Paso. Righty-lefty match up there. Hook a little. Hook a little. Yeah! Hurry back into the pocket for Angelo. And another strike for Brad. The deliberate five-step approach of Brad Angelo. Right now, Brad Angelo is in the driver's seat, taking command of this match early. He knows that he's one match win away from bowling for the title, and winning a tournament on the PBA Tour is the only thing Brad Angelo really hasn't accomplished out here. He's done everything else. Four bagger now for Angelo. For five in a row, chance for a 41 pin lead, commanding. That's what he told us last night. I don't want to give Patrick Gerard any hope. He can win this match. Four Angelo. pin for Angelo there. Early in the first segment, before our first commercial break, Brad said, I want this match over with. And he's done pretty well so far tonight. See, and this is a good sign right here. Even though he doesn't strike, that ball was well left of target, but it stayed on line long enough to only leave the four pin. New York has himself a mark, broke the four bagger streak he had going against young Patrick Gerard. When we return, we'll talk much more about the storylines of our great event here in Dallas. Break down the scorpion pattern, and we'll conclude this exciting semifinal. Gerard Angelo coming up. Who is that man on those voiceovers, huh? All right, Randy, that's good stuff. You might have a new job. All right, PBA Dallas Open, Angelo and Gerard continuing here. This center named after one of the all-time great PBA bowlers in Don Carter. Goes back to the 50s and 60s, his prowess on tour. The center honoring him. Now lives in South Florida. You know him pretty well. Great player and a great man, and I've had the pleasure of being a friend of his for quite a number of years. Played golf with him. He's a great guy. Welcome, everyone, to Dallas. Dave and Randy, our entire crew with you. Our live coverage of the PBA Tour continuing. Great stories, Randy, emerging today. Patrick Gerard, perhaps none better than that, folks. He did not speak a word of English about a year ago. PBA Tour trials, he was a huge surprise. Finished second to Mike Edwards to make this tour this season. He had never won a match play match at all until the Orange County Classic just about a month ago. Now, all of a sudden, he's on the verge of perhaps winning his first title. That's a great story to track today. And then Robert Smith as well, really emerging as more of a versatile bowler than perhaps even we thought he'd be. He really is. Last week, it was no surprise to see him on the telecast on that cheetah pattern. He won twice on that pattern last year. Kind of surprised this week, though. You know, this, this pattern doesn't play anything like last week's pattern. But Bob has recommitted himself. He's rededicated. And he's become a lot more versatile. And he certainly is a force to be reckoned with the second half of the season. Last week in El Paso, Parker Bone III almost had a 300 game in the championship match against Robert Smith. That was on the cheetah pattern. Now, Crocodile with the scorpion pad. Scorpion pad at 41 feet. And unlike last week, the players didn't have a whole lot of help in the middle part of the lane. And they didn't have that free hook on the outside part of the lane. So what they did, well, they played everywhere. Some guys played out, some guys played in, some guys played in between. Basically, it was pick your poison, find the best spot, repeat shots, and hope. Did you say poison from the scorpion pad? That's right, poison <laughs> from the scorpion pad. This is what they've done the last three years on this pattern. Now, keep in mind, the PBA lane maintenance crew has made some adjustments over the year. I mean, when we first started on this pattern back in 0203, this pattern was brutal. Down by 30. Works on a spare here to begin the sixth frame. Patrick Gerard, we talked about from a remote part of Robinson, Quebec. In a hurry. Avoids the double wood, just has the two pin up. His father, this TV broadcast will be on tape delay, being shown on TSN, the ESPN partner up in Canada. And his dad is going to translate from English. We'll be here, you and I, on the broadcast up there. 
in Quebec to French for the rest of the family to hear. So unique experience for the Girard family. One of these two players here, if they were to go on and win, would eliminate me mm. from the Tournament of Champions, the Dexter Tournament of Champions at season's end. And I never root against anyone. But let's just say, maybe I'm not rooting so strongly for Brad or Patrick. One of these two to send you out of our event in Uncasville, Connecticut in April. See, Patrick Gerard is trying to play a similar, slim, similar, that's easy for me to say, line that, than uh, Brad Angelo. The difference being Patrick Gerard's rev rate much higher, so it's going to be much more sensitive when he throws a bad shot. With his Brunswick ball, Brad Angelo. Had a perfect shot in 24 of his 25 games coming into this final. Today on TV, he used one ball. Very pleased with his reaction. This is Medford here. Check, check this out. See where the ball placement is? This is today. Difference being, on this picture here to the left, Brad Angelo trying to go straighter. He raises the ball at the top of his swing to increase his ball speed. Good tip for folks at home. If you want to throw it slower, hold it lower. You want to throw it faster, hold that ball up higher. Just again shows you how versatile you have to be out here. Almost to uh, help from the messenger across, across the deck for number 10. That goes back to shot making. With Robert Smith also will seem to be a lot more versatile with different oil patterns. And that's what Brad was telling us last night, Randy. He's got to come up with these big shots at the right time and adjust to the changing conditions with the oil. Well, I, I agree. Brad has got the, the whole arsenal now. He's, he's versatile. He can do everything he wants to do. What he has to do now is when he gets to the title match, he has to make the right decisions so slippery. before he throws that first ball. He's got to know in his mind this is the right thing to do, and it's got to be the correct move. Youngster Patrick Gerard works on the strike. He can cut this to a 21-pin deficit, trying to become the first-ever Canadian to win a PBA Tour title. He likes that ball. Next week, the best bowlers in the world head to Alabama for the PBA Birmingham Open. Check the start time, though, folks. A little bit earlier than normal, 12.30 Eastern, half an hour earlier than we would usually start for you. 9.30 on the West Coast. More log on ESPN.com. PBA Birmingham Open from Greater Birmingham, Alabama. Looking forward to going there. Back to Gerard. Right Can he ever throw the ball hard? And don't go anywhere, folks, because Patrick Gerard just made this a match. If he strikes out in the 10th frame, he's going to shoot 238. Right now, Brad Angelo going at a 229 pace. Early lead from Brad. Seemed like he had squelched out any hope that Gerard might have. But Patrick has very gradually worked himself back in with a turkey ball in that last frame. Wow. Four pin on the response from Angelo. Almost a 4-9. Now, Brad Angelo with a conversion here. If he were to strike out in the 10th frame, he'll shoot 238. I already told you what Patrick Gerard can do, but this is the interesting note. Brad Angelo had the choice of what lane he wanted to start and finish on. He chose to finish the match on the left lane, which makes Patrick Gerard get up in the 10th on the right lane and try All right. to finish Brad Angelo off. Right up. Brad will finish first. Patrick Gerard will finish last. Ten pin lead. Off the spare in the foundation frame for Angelo. Max scores. Look at that. Might we have a roll off here? Could be. We really had to hurry. Ouch. Just a disaster. No Way good. light in the Swiss zone. Well, and you don't see Brad do this very often, but that was a bad shot. He got it to the right. He said no good. 
and right now he's in trouble. However, with a conversion here and good count, he will still force Patrick Girard to th strike on the first ball in the 10th frame. Very important to cover this washout. One, two, four, ten. Does it! Oh, what a huge shot for Angelo, who has had so many struggles on television in big moments. That may be a career changer for him. Boy, and that head pin almost went around the 10. The neck of it caught the 10 pin. Great conversion. Remember those two huge con split conversions he made in Medford against Norm Duke. But what happened in the end? Did not win that tournament. Still, the quest continues for his first title. That's a lot better. Liked it better, right, however. Thank you. An eight pin count, four seven up for Brad Angelo. Yeah, that's enough now. The situation's simple. Gerard needs eight, or excuse me, a strike on the first ball and eight, and he will advance. Anything less, Brad Angelo wins sitting on the bench. All right. <laughs> Can you believe the moment this youngster, 21 years old, it, is facing right now? Five-step approach. Check out the high back swing and the cupped wrist right there. He's got to have it. He stood up on his feet. Yeah, that was off. You could tell from that the release. Bad. Yeah, he just overthrew it. it. Boy, he just got real fast. He was off to the races. Oh, my God, Patrick. When you're 21 years old, it's, it's kind of hard to control the adrenaline when you need one. But still one experience for him oh, as he takes oh, care of the no, 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 no. mark there. Great match. Great match. He is guaranteed by getting to the semifinals as Angelo does advance off to the championship. Gerard has won $10,000. Last year on tour, he won about $9,500. So already he's surpassed that. And that was the 17 events. And I asked him before the show today, hey, we you're know you're the one that was supposed to be nervous, and I got a little nervous over there. Good bull in this one. We know yeah, you share yeah. a cell phone with your remake. Yeah. How about affording uh, your own uh, cell phone now? They won the 10000 He said he wants to invest it. Brett Angelo is through. We're down eight remaining bowlers in the Miller Highlight PBA Skills Challenge. Tony Reyes and Chris Barnes start us off when we come back. I've seen it done before. <laughs> you ready? You look comfortable. Oh, God! Brad Angelo has defeated young Patrick Gerard, 222-216, the first semifinal, and will take on the winner of Robert Smith, Patrick Allen. That is yet to come. The round of eight of the Miller Highlight PBA Skills Challenge begins today with $20,000 to the event winner. The competition is really heating up. Dallas resident Chris Barnes takes on Tony Reyes with a trip to the semifinals on the line. It's now from San Bruno, California. Give it up for Tony Reyes. From Flower Mound, Texas, Chris Barnes. Three now. Start using a nine-pound ball with two fingers. Two fingers. Oh, I think that's one of them I forgot to tell you, Chris. No kidding. <laughs> uh. Tony using a nine-pound ball and only holding it with two fingers will try to strike. Thank you very little. <laughs> Do I at least get to use yours? Sure. I don't Try happen to have a nine pounder handy for me. <laughs> I say actually an eight, so if you need a nine, you know. Oh, get lucky. That's got a hook. Get lucky. Oh! Oh my goodness. What did you get for cheating. <laughs> hey buddy, you're not cheating, you're not trying. You are about to see one of the wildest shots in all of bowling. Chris Barnes will try to send one pin flying into the right lane to take out the 10 and have the ball cover the seven pin on the left lane. This is close to impossible. No way! Are you kidding me? Tony Reyes thinking, this ain't happening, man. Oh, 
job there. Incredible. Barnes converting the Flying Eagle. Go ahead and sit Reyes told us he has never even tried this shot before. She probably knows this girl. <laughs> we remain scoreless, and Reyes will try to make a strike with the one-step delivery. Not as easy as it looks, but he makes it look easy. Absolutely perfect. Barnes must make the shot to avoid trailing 1-0. Is that part of it? It's all about getting comfortable. Oh, OK. That's close. <laughs> That's a strike for Tony Reyes, ladies All right. All right, buddy Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Barnes will try to convert the 3, 4, 6, 7, 10 and avoid the obstacle on the lane. Oh. All right. Nice skill. Luckily, I've been shooting at this recently, last couple weeks, so I got a good head start on this, I think. Reyes must convert, or we are tied at one. No. Nope. Ah. All right, That's all right. I had to give him a strike for time to someone. Barnes is going to try to convert the 3-5-7 with the light ball. The ball will cover all three pins. Hook. Oh, God. <laughs> If I make this one here, <laughs> we're going to be here late Sorry, tonight here. <laughs> Tony Reyes trying to match. Needs help. Ah. All right, that's two. <laughs> Barnes will try to change hands and try to put some pressure on Tony Reyes by making the 110 with his left hand. Now, on that note, we're going to end this thing. Oh, man. Reyes must make the 110 lefty or his Miller High Life PBA skills run is over. This one's in the gutter. Chris Barnes is on his way to the semifinals. Chris Barnes. Join us next week for the battle of tour roommates as Jason Couch takes on Brian Kretzer as the Miller High Life PBA Skills Challenge round of eight continues. Randy, that'll be fun to watch. So Chris Barnes from the Dallas Metroplex and still Flower Mound, Texas, into the semifinals. Others trying to get in include Brad Angelo competing here today. He's in the finals of this match. And Brian Boss as well. One more exciting semifinal to come. Yeah! You can! Thanks to a pretty dramatic win for Brad Angelo over Patrick Gerard in his first ever show. Brad is to the final, so take on either Patrick Allen or Robert Smith. Lefty versus righty. One ahead ahead on TV, and Patrick Allen has the victory to this point. Randy Peterson, what's going on with these two guys today? Well, lots going on, especially with Patrick Allen, Dave Ryan. Patrick Allen has been on quite a roll the last four tournaments, finishing 10th, 5th, and 6th. And today, making the TV show, looks like everything's coming together for you. How do you like your chances today and why? Well, it's been a good run, but, you know, Robert's a great competitor, and uh, Brad obviously is looking for his first title, so I got a long way to go. Thanks, Patrick. Good luck. Robert, you finished second last week in El Paso, but you admitted to making a big mistake in terms of adjustments in the title match. What did you learn from that? You know, most of the time when I'm bowling on shows, a lot of time I just rely on my physical ability and just what I can do to get the ball off the corner. Last week, it definitely cost me because I'd made the move left. Everybody saw what happened in the first five frames. I made, went back, played the lanes like I was supposed to, and everything fell in again. So this week, I'm going to make sure I don't do that same mistake, play the lanes properly instead of doing what I think I can do best, and we'll see how it goes. Great. Thanks. Good luck, Robert. This is a great matchup. I can't miss.
Power versus finesse, and two guys that love to hoop it up, Dave. Randy Robert telling us last night when we interviewed him that he really feels a little more nervous on this scorpion oil pattern because, as you talked about and we've broken down, on the cheetah pattern, which yields such high scores. We saw that last week in El Paso, Texas. Robert has had so much success, but this is more of a thinking man's pattern, if you will, for Robert Smith. Goes back to the shot making we talked about with Angelo. Did he ever come through on that multi-pin spare in his match with Gerard? He's gonna have to use a lot of strategy today. What power! Blasts his way through 10 in the pit. Lots of power, but lots of speed for Robert Smith today. When you have a rev rate that it's that gets into about the 500 plus range, that's RPMs, revolutions per minute. The only way to keep the ball on a straight line is to throw it really hard. Lone lefty of our show, PA, Patrick Allen. Not the start he wanted, just a six pin count on a light ball. Leaves the bucket, ball comes in just a pinch light, and keep in mind, this is about a half an inch from striking. Just doesn't catch enough of the head pin. Perfect on multi-pin conversions all week. And when you're bowling on a tough pattern, when you don't strike, you better leave yourself something you can make and you better convert it. Liked it. You heard him say right on, which leads us right to the Baby Ruth Real Deal matchup, Randy. And he's still perfect and pretty tight matchup here. Look at the averages are almost identical. But here's the thing, tougher pattern. If it comes down to a spare shooting contest, advantage Patrick Allen. You want to be a player on the PBA Tour? You better make spares. Check this out. Second this week. One key reason, as we saw with our graphics there in the interview with Patrick, you had, he's been so hot of late. What a second half. This is our third event, second swing of our season. No help on the 10-pin there for Patrick Allen. You can see his ball, Dave, coming up just a little bit light there as well. Leads me to believe guys like Allen and Patrick Girard having such success in the second half must really be enjoying the seven-game qualifying blocks in the round of 64. Well, I think if you were to pull the players, I think the majority of them like it. The players want to bowl games. They want to bowl more games. And when it was a match play only type of tournament, if you were in a slump, you could go a month and only bowl 16 games of competitive bowling. 10 pin goes down for Patrick Allen, who defeated Robert Smith head to head back in the 2001 Greater Detroit Open. High scoring game, 236. Smith just 204 that day. Smith, winner of six titles. Patrick has won two PBA championships. But this really is a milestone type day. I agree with you in an earlier conversation today, Randy, for Robert Smith. He can really distinguish himself as a more versatile player. Well, it's not very often that you see Robert Smith going this straight. Well, that's way Rob. light. Trying to get that to Come wheel on, into the There's pocket. No grabbing it. It's just rolling. Difficult split. Yeah, and see, he didn't look comfortable on this lane in warm-ups. You can see there's a pretty fine line on this pattern. Remember last week, man, when you got it to the right, it would it looked like somebody kicked it back left. Not this week. One, two, four, ten. Not easy. Look out. Whiffs by number ten and an open All right, done. for Robert Get Smith. 223.14. One five average and got by Danny Wiseman, won the ABC Masters, six games in the round of eight. And last year's Dexter Tournament of Champions winner. A couple of recent major winners, and of course the great Walter A. Williams in the round of 16. Remember Smith last week derailed a bit when he threw a gutter ball, came back to knock down all 10 pins, but he's faced some recent adversity on TV, so we'll see how he responds to the open now. Very well, thank you. All 10 down for Smith. Little miniature 
looks at career building moments for a player like Smith who's got to learn how to adjust as the TV lane and the pair, the oil breaks down. Well, I mean, the way he's playing the lanes is a complete different mindset for a guy like Robert Smith. You look at power, when you look at Robert Smith, you think of power, and power is always equal to, you know, missing right or throwing the ball right and getting it to hook back. Right now, Robert Smith trying to go real straight. And Patrick Allen trying to keep the hot streak going we pride talked off, about. Folks, pride off. Got a pride off. That's his slogan statement. Pride off. That means get that ball out of the hand and the right spot on those boards into the pocket. Very, very deliberate. He's got a checklist a mile long and sometimes I think has a tendency to overthink it. He said himself last night that he's trying to simplify the checklist. Works on a strike. That would have given him a 21 pin lead. Instead, seven pin stands for Patrick Allen. When you watch Patrick Allen in warm-ups, he was using a plastic ball. And plastic balls carry oil down the lane. They don't absorb oil like the strikes ball we use today, the strike ball we balls we use today. And you can see that Patrick Allen's ball is entering the pocket weak. It's entering late. I'm wondering if maybe he carried too much oil down the lane. Seven pin down. Such a contrast between these two where Maximum Bob throws so hard and Allen that deliberate almost Parker Bone the third like ball down the lane. Speaking of Parker, who won last week in El Paso, he took him out in the round of 16. Eric Thorkel, another southpaw, went down in the round of 32. And Tim Chris works with us on our ESPN broadcasts in seven. A good week for Tim. And Patrick Allen said himself that Tim Chris was very unlucky last night in losing to PA, but hey, that's that's our sport. Four pin. Pretty good shot, and he's just trying to keep the ball in line. Remember, high ref player, lots of hit. Not a lot of hold on the lane for Robert Smith or anyone anyone else for that matter. And again, whole different mindset for him trying to play this straight on the lanes. And Randy, along those lines, Robert told us last night, he's really coming into this show today guessing as to the strategy and game plan, how he was going to attack these lanes. Last week, so comfortable on that cheetah pattern. But here, it's a different ball game. Pretty hard not to be comfortable on the cheetah pattern when you have free hook to the right and the oil left. Robert wants to make sure we have a shout out for his little girl back home in California, Kayla, seven years old, watching today. And I'm sure Kayla loves daddy striking there. Kayla certainly loved that shot. Robert needs to start throwing more of those on the right lane. He's perfect on the left lane. Still looking for his first strike on the right lane. This is classic power player posture. Starts off straight and he ends up diagonal. Trail leg to the right, or to the left rather, that follow through right shoulder below the left shoulder. Robert telling us that you gotta appreciate there are several ways to get to the pocket on this oil pattern. And as the lanes break down thanks to the TV lights, we're now in our second match. Things are always changing. A lot of strategy folks involved at bowling at this level as Allen has a three pin stand. Pottery of Strain to see the PBA Tour exemptions. These guys are set for next season. See Pete Weber and Tom Baker, long time exemptions because they've won the majors. Rick Lawrence, a winner this year. St. Louis, Jason Hurds. Title came in Wichita. These guys look a little tight, don't you think, Dave? Dave? Another excellent match. These guys look a little tight. Anytime you bowl in a lane condition like this under this type of pressure, mm. you hear Patrick Allen saying, come on, pry it off, pry it off. That means he's just trying to get it out of his hand clean without grabbing it. And when you feel like you're bowling in a closet where you don't have any room left or right, it's hard 
to pry it off. That goes back to, at least with Smith, not being in familiar territory. So a lot of guesswork out there, and it's educated guesswork, but still, strategy and the mental focus critical for both of these bowlers here. Nice help, pin action from Patrick Allen, a 10-pin lead. He's through six frames. He and Smith battle in an exciting semifinal. This week's PBA Commissioner's Exemption was Carolyn Dorn Ballard, wife of PBA Pro Dell Ballard, and an 18-time winner on the women's tour. First game, I was really nervous. I was. But after the first game, it was great, and I had a wonderful cross. Um, I bowled with Parker, Tom Baker, and Steve Wilson. And besides knowing all of them, they were just fantastic, so it kind of eased the pressure a little bit. I really missed this week to week. So I was really psyched up to bowl this week. I, I miss bowling out on tour, and hopefully, though, one day there'll be a women's tour because I think uh, that's where I want to go. <laughs> Just minutes from downtown Dallas, Texas, the PBA Dallas Open. Patrick Allen, Robert Smith battling here to see who will face Brad Angelo in today's championship match. We are at Don Carter's All-Star Lane West. To bowl well, all your moving parts must be in sync. Randy takes a look at Patrick Allen's subtle hands in this week's Dexter approach. Yeah, one of the things PA has is a great release set up by a beautiful arm swing and great timing. Something that he works very, very hard to accomplish. Now check this out. What is he doing with his hand? Well, he's creating a little side roll. This is called axis rotation. See that ball rotating this way. Why? Well, let me show you why. Once the ball clears the length of the oil pattern, it's going to go to the right. It's going to travel in direction of rotation. It's going to give him beautiful results like that, Dave. Love that strong motion. Special part of our broadcast this week. Featured throughout our season here on ESPN's coverage of the PBA Tour. Really accentuating our coverage of the Dexter approach. Robert Smith told us last week he considers his first half of the season a disaster. He was getting rolled over by players he felt he should have been beating handily. Thought it was a mediocre first half at best, the first eight events. Now strategy. Can he adjust with the lanes? Gosh. Maybe not. They get a little in, the ball goes four pin, a little rider up is... Gosh. Robert's in the in-between zone. A little bit right, it does this. A little bit left of that spot, it goes high. Keep in mind also that he's using a ball that rolls very, very early. And the earlier the ball rolls, the less it's going to hook in the back part of the lane. Look out. Eight pin up. He knew it upon release. It could be trouble, and it was. Okay. And open. Sometimes speed kills, Dave, and that one got away from Robert. He's thrown very hard and pulled left. Suddenly down by 22 just a moment ago was a 10-pin deficit. Robert rededicated himself over the Christmas break. Mental focus, big part of it, he said. For moments like this, and look out, another split disaster for Smith. That was Waylight. <laughs> Two for ten stand for Robert. Get the ball over here, slide the two into the ten, the ball will cover the four. at the scoreboard that's where Robert is checking out and back-to-back -back open frame something we rarely see on the PBA tour It's just shocking to see back-to-back -back open frames now look at the lead balloon for Patrick Allen who's been on the bench watching the lead expand head of PBA.com all the inside information on Walter A. Williams jr. and his quest to break Earl Anthony's all-time wins record, simply click on the new Chasing Earl link for all the stories and stats on the tour's greatest bowler ever, the man who's trying to move past him in the record book. All that and much more at PBA.com. It should be bookmarked already on your high speed. If it isn't, do it. It is on mine. All right, me too. Patrick Allen <laughs> takes advantage 
of the Smith stumbles. And the lead up to a chance for 43. You see the five-step approach of Patrick Allen. See the inside part of the hand, or the, the hand of the inside part of the ball, rather. The nice body lean this way. Nice knee bend, beautiful release. It is at 43 pins now. Max scores. 248 for PA. Driver's seat would be an understatement. They go up by 53 pins with a strike here. Yes, baby. You bet. That shot there, very sexy, Dave. Gives him three bagger. He's in the driver's seat. All he has to do is stay behind the foul line for the most part, the ninth and tenth. See Robert squaring his shoulders up. That's to try to keep the ball in a straight line. Now he's got himself a strike as the adjustment is properly made, but back-to-back -back opens a killer for him. Our tour exemptions for this season, 16 event champs, four major champions. We've only had one major so far this year. It's an interesting schedule change. In years past, they've had two and two, the before and after the new year. There is the notable point list, including Ryan Schaefer's won several titles on tour. Steve Jarrett's won three titles last year, Randy, including here in Dallas, and right now is on the outside looking in. Monticelli Hall of Famer. A couple other titleists down there that Lonnie well, Wallacek with the, twice. two titles. That's not bad. A lot of guys that need some help here in the next uh, eight, nine weeks. Eight weeks left in the schedule to get points. Dexter Tournament of Champions to wrap up our season in April is not point related. Woo! Look at that. <laughs> Talk about oh, steamrolling the ball good. down lane. Uh, A little frustration for Rapid Robert. Maximum Bob, as we call him, because he throws such a high rev rate. That was real fast. Yeah. <laughs> that had a little red rear end to it when he heaved that one down there. As they say in Texas. As you say in Texas. <laughs> Chance for four bagger and a 53 pin lead. Pretty much putting it away. That is exactly what happens for Patrick Allen. And he will take on Brad Angelo in a very interesting lefty righty final. I got to do this next one for the tour, Mark. Huh? Yeah, you got it. I don't want to let anybody down. A little fast track to the end here since our result has been determined. Although with Patrick, maybe that's not so easy. He's very deliberate, isn't he? Even when it's over, and keep that pre-shot routine intact and a seven pin for him. What a kind of adjustment. Uh, 2015, friends. <laughs> I wonder what kind of adjustment oh, gosh, he made in the eighth frame because he just struck back to back on the right lane for the first time all game. Yeah. Only two combined titles between Patrick Allen and Brad Angelo. Angelo has never won on tour. Allen just the pair. I moved, yeah, I moved everything for right. It's amazing how the ball hooks all of a sudden. We've talked about the adjustments Robert had to make on this pattern he's really not that comfortable with. Well, I mean, he, was, he made the same mistake last week on a pattern he was comfortable with. He saw one thing, his mind said, go in this direction, and it was the wrong direction. See, now that's the Rob we, that's we all know and love. <laughs> <laughs> the big boomer, a lot of hook, right? Had a good week for him. Coming up, our first ever TV matchup. Alan, Angelo, and a final. We've got the A-team set for our final here in Dallas. Brad Angelo, Patrick Allen. 
Robert Smith, an avid sports fan. His all-time favorite moment might surprise you. Find out what it is in this week's Miller Six Pack. Describe your first crush. Oh, third grade with this girl, Donna, in elementary school. She used to sit behind me and just, uh, she was the first girl that I actually would sit there and get caught staring at her during class, so I would have to say it was her. Favorite music? Oh, pretty much alternate, alternative. Uh, Incubus right now is definitely by far my favorite band. Um, got all five of their albums, a couple bootlegs, things like that. They're just, every song that they have is just, it sounds different. I love it. I think they're just amazing. As a child growing up, what was your favorite toy? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know what? Favorite toy growing up would probably have been, I would say, basketball. I mean, I was a big basketball guy growing up from 6, 7 up until about 16. I mean, I played a lot of basketball. And, I mean, me and my buddies around in the area, we'd always be outside in my driveway shooting hoops. So I would definitely think it was the basketball. Okay. What is the greatest sports moment you've ever seen? 1995. UCLA in the uh, college basketball tournament. Uh, it was round one, Tyus Edney running up the court at the end of the game, making that layup. It was, yes. it was unbelievable, especially after they had just lost the lead and then to do all that and run back up and make the shot to win the game by one, and then they end up being national champion. That was probably the best one I've seen. Yeah. If you could have dinner with any three persons, living or dead, who would it be and why? Three people I would probably have dinner with would probably be Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, and my dad, Jim. What's the dumbest thing you've ever done? The dumbest thing that I have ever done has to be in Erie. This was my second title back in two, was it 2000? Yeah, 2000. And uh, ironing my clothes, getting ready for that week earlier in the week and Tuesday, and uh, somehow proceeded to burn my face with the iron. I had a line from here to here all through the week. And on the show, it finally went away. I mean, you had to really look to see it, but it finally went away. But I mean, that has to be by far the dumbest thing I've ever done. Can I ask you how that happened? Was with the, the phone ring and you went hello uh, with was, the it, iron? It, it I was, mean, it was something along the lines where I was ironing and I put it down and I went down to grab something and I just grazed it with my face. And I mean, just, I can't even explain it. Robert Smith is this week's Miller Six Pack. On the road, our schedule goes to Birmingham next week, Trustville, Alabama. Note the starting time for our show, by the way, is 12.30 Eastern time, and those are the three Pro-Am sites. Log on to PBA.com to sign up for those. Then we're going to Greater Atlanta, Norcross, Georgia. Two Pro-Am sites for you there as well. At Brunswick Zone, Norcross, and Brunswick Zone, Marietta. Either Patrick Allen or Brad Angelo takes home the title today. Allen looks for his third career championship. Angelo is first. We are back in the Dallas Metroplex, getting set for our exciting final today between Patrick Allen and Brad Angelo. Hey, let's check out the Geico Direct Championship recap. Thanks, Dave. Earlier in match number one, it was Brad Angelo defeating Patrick Gerard by the score of 222 to 216. A little. Oh, Gerard needed a strike to advance and couldn't produce. You were the one that was supposed to be nervous, and I got a little nervous over there. Then in match number two, it was Patrick Allen defeating Robert Smith by the score of 226 to 170. Smith's open frames proved costly. PA advances to the finals, setting up a great championship match for the PBA Dallas we Open title. Tander Randy and Patrick Allen, one of the hottest bowlers on tour. Can you stay hot for one more match, Patrick? One more match. That's all I'm asking. It's been a good run. Um, obviously, Brad's been on a good run, too, but let's see what happens. All right, good luck to you. Brad said a moment ago, you're, you'll acknowledge the fact you are nervous. How important is this for you to break through and get that first win? I, I am nervous, and uh, one of the reasons I'm, I'm a little nervous is I, I, I was using an absolute inferno all week, um, every game but one game, and, and uh, you know now I come back over here after being out for 20 minutes, and, and the lanes are a little different, so hopefully I can just, uh, I think I'm going to change the classic zone and see what happens. All right, ball change, Randy. You heard it from Brad Angelo. We'll see how he adjusts on a TV pair. Big championship match today from Dallas. Keys for Brad Angelo. Figure out the left lane. Maybe that's why he's made the ball change. And don't think about winning your first title. Just let it happen. For Patrick Allen, he's got to stay aggressive. 
He bowled really well in the last half of that last match because he got aggressive and figured out a way to get the seven pin out. One more match. That's all Patrick Allen asks for. Okay, start off in style. Nine pin. Good looking shot. Uh, perfect shot. Now, they used to always say that the only true tap in bowling for a right hander was a solid eight, for a left hander, a solid nine. You can't throw it any better. Spoke with Patrick before the match today about being the only left hander. How do you think being the only southpaw will affect this match now that the oil is broken okay. down this much toward the latter half of our show? I think he's figured out what he needs to do, and I think his ball reaction's fine. It's just a matter of his mind allowing his body to perform. This is why you practice hours upon hours, so that your body will just respond and do what it's trained to do. Takes care of the nine pin for a mark to begin this championship match. Big, deep breath there for Brad Angelo. Just outside Buffalo, absolutely crushed by a mammoth blizzard that's just taken out really the whole Northeast. So we're sure wife Michelle and the two kids are digging out today in Buffalo. Great shot. All right, Brad Angelo. Leading us to our baby roof real deal matchup for the final. And when you look at this, it's four pins a game, advantage PA, higher spare conversion percentage, everything kind of looking like it's going to be PA's day. He has experience because he has won before. However, to take a phrase from our own Chris Berman, that's why we play the game. 50 events, no titles has been outstanding on tour. Uh-oh. Just avoids the 7-10. Brad, rookie of the year, a points champion last year. Still yet to win. Almost the pocket 7-10, the worst Deadwood. break you could get in bowling, in my opinion, because you hit the pocket, you throw, throw it pretty good, and... Instead of leaving yourself with a spare you can make, you're left with a 7-10. Fortunately, Brad gets the 7 to go late. 100% single pin conversions for the week. Quick glance down to the footwork, but all is well for Brad on that conversion. We go back to the lefty, Patrick Allen, who did feel as the lone southpaw. You and I talked about that. We saw a lone left-hander. Other finishers as well down below. From match play, the round of 32 on. Format being adjusted. But Patrick did think that that could really play to his advantage. Especially late. We'll see if that comes through. Did you see anything different between that shot and the shot he threw in the first frame? That's what I'm talking about. That should be a double. Instead, it's spare strike. Both shots looked identical. Check this out. You see how that ball actually took the nine pin out? First frame, the ball actually went right by it. All even, chance for a 10-pin lead. A double third frame. Yeah! Remember the key, stay aggressive, get the seven pin out. His ball looks like it's finishing much harder in the back part of the lane now, and I think that's because he's being aggressive. Watch this, pop it on the bottom, keep your hand underneath, roll it with a little side turn, and then have the four go to the sidewall and do its business. We shall see if that continues. Here's my big concern for Brad Angelo the nerves look at the sweat he told us before this match yeah I am nervous what's gonna happen knowing his past history as great as he's been on tour on television there really have been struggles for Brad Angelo as we see fellow Buffalonian 
Tom Baker, roommate on the road, and a very good friends. He's really rooting hard for him today. Tom, as we saw earlier in the show, exempt for quite a while after his world championship win last March. That's why he's smiling. <laughs> he's exempt. <laughs> his roommate's out here battling for uh, his first title ever. Tom's on easy street for the next five years. Speaking of Buffalo, assuming that the snow melts eventually, Brad and his wife, Michelle, planning to build a new home. They'll break ground in April in Lockport, his hometown. Not far outside that western New York City. Buffalo, New York. Perfect shot, Brad Angelo. Keeps this match close. A championship exemption for next year. $40,000 on the line. We'll crown a champ. Well, that's a good shot. Yeah, that is. Who will take home our championship from Dallas, Texas this afternoon? The answer will unfold in a moment. Special thanks to Joe Schumacher. Schumacher and Company president. He has great staff hosting us all week long here in Dallas. And now, time to check in with the Unirol Tire Rock and Roll Randy. Brad Angelo is going to roll the 1, 2, 4, 10. Watch this. Nicely done. Gets the head pin to go to the sidewall and take the 10 out. That was in the first match. Against young Patrick Gerard. And Brad had told us, he remember back his first TV show was last season in Omaha, how nervous he was. Just a blur it went by so quickly, he said. But now more experienced, Brad Angelo. Takes on Patrick Allen for the title. Chance for a 21-pin lead with a strike. from our crew high above where Patrick Allen is lined up which board he is attacking to try to get to the pocket and for more log on ESPN.com looks for the four bagger yes, has it baby yes Patrick Allen snapping the seven out nicely on the left lane. This one gave him a four-bagger. Back to the theme, Brad Angelo and shot making. Can he do it? And one of the reasons why he hasn't won on television, he won his first title, his opponent's averaging 240 at him. Looks a little bit light there. It's just tighter, man. Didn't like it too much. Brad has run the buzz saws in the past on TV, hasn't he? Just incredible numbers. Look at that statistic. That's the opponent excelling at the right time for them, wrong time for Brad. All right. Struggled in his last frames of semi number one. That is why he made the change with the equipment. He's also made a change in his setup. You can see that he has only thrown two strikes in the first half of the championship match. Trails by 31, sixth frame. Brad told us last night, his time to shine. On TV, in a final. Shots like that, he may get back in this match. Semi number one, you see where he was playing? Different bowling ball going much straighter. Semi number two, look how much further left he is. A good 10 to 12 boards further left, different bowling ball. He moved, I just, I wasn't ready to go. He was, he was moving. See how PA finished out that semifinal win for him. Robert Smith. Works on a four-bagger here. He was hot at the end of that match. 
Chance for a five bagger and a 41 pin lead. They're going down late. A late hit indeed taps it down. This is going to get in the swish zone. It's going to slap the five pin silly. It didn't know which direction to fall in. And like you were saying, Dave, closed great in his first match and started red hot. Five bagger as he goes to the seventh frame with a 41 pin lead. Another strike. He's up 51 pins. Pin lead, Patrick Allen, who made the Miller High Life Masters to open up our season. Lost in the finals. On TV to Danny Wiseman. Second show comes here today, also in the finals, but a huge lead to the seventh now for Angelo. And I hate to say this, but for Brad Angelo, it is do or die. He needs to strike and strike now. And in my opinion, if he doesn't strike out, he won't have a chance to win this match or this tournament. Oh, no help late, unfortunately, for Brad Angelo there. And a big hole. Now I made the right move. And that may be it for him, the way Patrick Allen's bowling. Stone nine, watch the ball go right by it. Ugly break for Brad. Nice break for Patrick Allen. Nine pin down, the extraordinary trend of opponents going well against Brad Angelo on TV just continues. It's got to be stunning for him. Next week, the best bowlers in the world. These two included head to Alabama for the PBA Birmingham Open. ESPN's coverage comes your way Sunday at a new time. Note that. Be sure to put it down if you're recording. TiVo back home, 12.30 Eastern time, 9.30 on the West Coast. For more, log on ESPN.com. Different time for our Atlanta tournament down the road, too, Randy. A couple of weeks, that's 2 Eastern. So make that scheduling note on Super Bowl Sunday. We're 2 Eastern start here on ESPN. Eighth frame for Angelo. Perfect shot. Tremendous season last year. 19 caches, 20 events, a tour best, 18 match play. Appearances, five shows, but no titles. So, again, that title of, and unfortunately for him, sort of a dubious honor of having a, another great season leading up to the TV show, but unable to deliver for Brad. I mean, I really don't know what to say or how to respond to that. I'm, I think there's a lot of people out here that are surprised that he hasn't won yet. I mean, again, he's done... Everything you can do out here, consistency is there. On the easy patterns, he bowls well. On the tough patterns, he bowls well. He gets to television. Just can't seal the deal come TV day. That was not good. No, it wasn't. What was good was that he didn't split. Man, all he's got to do is stay out of his own way, stay clean. He's going to win his third career PBA title. He's going at a 240 clip. The best Brad Angelo can shoot is 229. This one gets away from him, goes right through the face. But again, part of his success all week, Dave, was when he did make an errant shot, he avoided the disastrous open frames, something you have to do on a tough lane condition. Which is what we have today, and he's en route to a victory. Trying to cover the 4-7 here. Does that. Not happy, saw the six-bag streak end. I feel like Golden, please. Work isn't done for Patrick Allen. He's still focused. That's impressive. With a 49 pin lead. Shot. There it is, baby, yes! And that's it. Yeah! 
Patrick Allen has wrapped up his third career PBA title with that perfect shot. Yeah, he needed to just mark in the ninth frame. If Even if he opens in the tenth frame, he's going to be in the 230s. The best Brad Angelo can shoot is 229. He needs to stay behind the foul line in the tenth frame. Obviously, he can do that. Avoids a split, 10 pin for Angelo. Oh, boy. And no I chance think. now for Brad to catch him. He knows it, acknowledging to the crowd that the final stats may not be in, but this match is over. And Patrick Allen will have another championship. Number three in his career. And wow, is he ever making a statement in the second half of this season. Once the format changed, he has responded beautifully to that. And had a great run. Three straight appearances in the round of eight. And now a title as well. Kind of had the sense that he was getting pretty close to winning. If it wasn't going to happen this week, it was going to happen soon. He's been on quite a roll and dominating out here for the last month without getting to the show. I just want to leave that every 10th frame and just see if I can make it. <laughs> Uh, why not a little trick shot here, Brad? Have some fun with the crowd. <laughs> Chalk it up to another learning experience for Brad Angelo. Doesn't quite matter so much this time, does it? It's time the one, two, eight, ten, little double wood, and he won't get it. All right, thank you. So the day and the weekend for Brad Angelo, the runner-up. Great ball. To Patrick Allen. That lane just got too tight down the lane. That's all. Coming up, the 2004 Sudden Death 7 ball. You're on ESPN. Consistency and repeating. This is two separate shots. Check out how close together these two are. Near perfection on both of these. Both of these I shots resulting in X's. What a tremendous <laughs> look from our Stro Motion on how close those two shots were. And having fun with the crowd here. Of course, we are in the midst of Calvert country. But Patrick is from Terrytown, New York, just north of New York City, and he cannot possibly bring himself to root for the Cowboys under any circumstance. And I've got to thank PA for uh, allowing me to be on the bubble wow. for the Dexter Tournament of Champions for at least one more week. You stay alive, partner. I'm Barely. Still, you're still there. I'm, I'm clinging. <laughs> Great job. Great ball. Talk about consistent. Three events in a row to start off the second half of our season. Patrick Allen, a winner in Dallas. Patrick Allen, a champion in Dallas, Texas today. Patrick, this was without question a shot maker's oil pattern. How did you stay so consistent ball in and ball out today? Well, yeah, it is a shot maker's pattern, but uh, Brad and Robert had a little problem on the right lane, and I was able to manipulate the lane a little better with, uh, you know, throwing the right ball and being on the other side of the lane. I just had a little better reaction today. Congratulations. Thank Enjoy you. that third career title. Patrick Allen, a winner in Big D today. Congratulations. Go to him. Be sure to join us again next Sunday, 1230 Eastern Time. New start time. Note that 930 on the West Coast when the PBA Tour comes together for the Birmingham Open. Today's event has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Coming up next on ESPN, Sudden Death 7 Ball featuring Thomas Anger taking on Corey Duell. For the entire crew, my partner Randy Peterson, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Dallas. An unforgettable day for Patrick Allen.